Thank you everyone for joining us today. What I'm going to do first, and in case you just missed that little uh, uh, introduction by Keith, is I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the technology first of a display campaign, kind of what it is, how it works, um, and then I'm going to jump over into uh, what you're looking at right here is this dashboard to where we have with a display campaign, a digital campaign, is we have a lot of data that we can sort through and look at to see how things are, are operating and things are functioning and we're able to go in there and optimize and tweak things, make them run a little bit better as, as months and months go on. So actually with digital campaigns, it's kind of the norm for a digital campaign, if you're doing it correctly, to function better over time and not necessarily right out of the gate. So with that being said, I'm just going to jump right over here and we're going to talk a little a little display advertising, if you will. So display advertising is every time you see these little banner ads, whether you're on your, your desktop, your mobile device, uh, one thing to, to keep in mind is that every time that you see one of these ads, you've just been served what we call in the industry an impression. And what we do is the way that we serve uh, well, uh, a display campaign is that we, we, we sell impressions and then we deliver those impressions for you. And we actually sell them by the thousands. It's called CPM. Cost per milli or some Greek word or whatnot, that means a thousand. And so what happens is these, these banner ads can, as you've probably experienced them, seeing many and many of them, is they look, they look different. But they're meant to grab your attention to either make you click on it to get more information on what you're looking at or to have you go and search it by some other means after you've seen it two, three, five, ten, twenty 10, 20 times. Okay? Um, now, let's just say, for example, I always like to use 100,000 impressions. If you were to come in to Keith and say, hey, Keith, I, I, I love the idea. Let's start off with 100,000 impressions and, uh, per month. And now you're looking at us going, okay, great. I have all these impressions. How are you going to deliver those to my target customers? Or in this case, you know, people who are looking for a job. Well, that's easy. Here are four different tactics that we can use to deliver your impressions to this, these individuals. I like to relate this to the stock market. Uh, you never want to put all your eggs in one basket because you don't know how that stock is going to perform at the end of the year. Uh, so you want to diversify. And, and as we know by uh, diversifying, you know one stock is going to outperform the other ones. So with these tactics here, we know that one of those is going to outperform the other one or deliver more impressions to your target people. Um, better than the other ones, but we don't know right out of the get gate, you know, which one it is. So we're going to use what we call blended tactics. We're going to use a number of these, if not all of these, to deliver your impressions. So what I'm going to do right now is just briefly go over what each one of these is. And it's actually pretty easy to understand. So the first one you can see here is, is keyword search retargeting. So I'm going to click right here and, and keyword search retargeting is when someone goes to a website with a search bar. Now, this is not a search engine. This is not Google or Bing or Yahoo. Those are search engine. That's a different platform for, for keyword marketing. This is keyword search targeting to where somebody types in a keyword on a search bar on one of the millions of websites that are out there that have these. So eBay is one example. Uh, Amazon here is another example. And the list just goes on and on. So in your case, you're looking for people who are looking for jobs. They're looking for employment. This example is someone who's searching for a computer, a MacBook Pro. So hypothetically, if you were, if you, the client, were uh, sold MacBook Pros, and I would go in here to Amazon saying, "Hey, I want to search for MacBook Pro because I need a new computer," it makes sense to serve your ads to this person because they're going and they're typing in a very specific thing. So if someone goes to a website and they type in employment or or something related to looking for a job or I am looking for a job, or something in that matter, we would want to serve your ads to them. So that's keyword search retargeting, very easy to understand. The second one is what's called contextual targeting ads. So this is where more of a behavior uh, online is, is why we would serve your ads to a very specific person. So actually, let me jump to this slide right here. So contextual ads is, I break it down very simply here. Number one, there's millions of websites out there that are visited daily. And what we did is we took all of those millions of websites and we put them into a few different hundred categories. So one category might be auto, one might be unemployment or you know, job search, another one might be restaurants, so on and so forth. 
because what we do is these websites sell the list of these daily visitors. Now, this is not personal information. These are all encrypted numbers, if you will. And, and what we do is we go in and we, we purchase this information to serve ads to someone in a very specific category. So in this case with manpower, it would be unemployment or you know jobs or someone who's looking for employment. And we would serve ads to them. Going back to this slide here, this is just an example of someone looking for a car. If someone's searching for a car, more times than not, they're going from site to site to site and because they're looking for the right car at the right price, right color, right mileage, so on and so forth. So it's obvious that they're looking for a car. And so if you sold a car or an auto dealer, it would make sense to put your ad out in front of this person because they're looking for what you're selling. So to replace this example of a car, let's say they're looking for employment and they would just go from site to site to site. Now these are sites that have to do with jobs and have to do with you know being unemployed or whatnot. So we would serve your ads to them. That's contextual targeting ads. The third one is probably one that you've experienced more than others, and this is website retargeting. This is where you go to a website, and after you leave that website, you all of a sudden start seeing banner ads or these ads for the website that you were just on. And you could okay. see them the next day, you could see them the next week, up to 30 days. Let me give you an example of what this means. So I went to readingglasses.com, and I left their site after less than a minute, and I was wondering, I wonder if these guys are going to retarget me. So I, I went to sites that I knew serve banner ads. I went to CNN.com, SportingNews.com, Weather.com, and these guys were retargeting me like a little too much if you ask me because all of these screenshots were taken within five minutes of leaving their website. Now, we normally, over here at Cumulus Digital, we don't like to overdo it. We don't want to be the annoying banner ad that you see too much. Uh, we have learned with our years of experience that we're more like three to four impressions a day, you know, moving forward up to 30 days is a good reminder of, hey, you know, it's like you're raising your hand. Don't forget about us. We've got that product or service that you need. Or in this case, we've got that job that you need. So that's website retargeting. And the last one is what's called mobile geofencing. You may or may not have heard of it. This is kind of like the shiny new toy, even though it's been out for a number of years. This is where we can actually put a literal geofence using Google Maps around anything. Here you can see it's around a football stadium. We can do it uh, as, as large as you want, as small as a single parking stall. We can turn these little guys on and off whenever you want. So let's say there's a, an employment convention, a job fair that's only on for a weekend. We can geofence that job fair, turn it on Friday at noon and shut it off you know Sunday at 5 p.m. and then what we do is what is when somebody enters this geofence when it's turned on with a mobile device our system is going to do everything it can to grab that that device ID so we can then start serving ads to them on that device so it doesn't pop up like a text message or like an alert or anything this is where they pull out their phone or their mobile device they start searching you know, on a web browser like Chrome or Safari, or they go into an app that serves the banner ads, and this is when we start serving your ads to them, either while they're in that geofence or after they leave for, again, up to 30 days. And you can have as many of these as you want. So if you want to geofence some competitors, we can do that. So... That's mobile geofencing. We actually go a step further because like I mentioned, this is a digital campaign. We like to give you as much information as possible to be as transparent as possible. So what we'll do is we'll put a conversion zone around your business. Because, um, well in this case, Manpower, you, you guys more times than not would love to have someone come in for to turn in an application, to go in for a job interview. And you wanna see kind of, hey, how many people are coming into our business because of our digital ads or because of this display campaign. So what we do is when somebody enters a geofence, they get served an ad. They don't even have to click on it. They get served an ad and then after that, it could be that day, the next week, we still have that device ID. So when they enter the conversion zone or your business, we count that as a weighted action. Some people call it a foot traffic attribution. We call it weighted action. They all mean the same thing. So at the end of the month, each month after month after month, we can show you, hey, look, 
you had 25 weighted actions or 25 people came into your business after being served an ad from your display campaign or you've had 44 or you know over the lifetime of the, you've had a few hundred so we can show you how many people now notice i said after being served an ad and not because they were served an ad because we don't know why they entered your business now they may have been served an ad but we don't know if they clicked on the ad or if it's because of the ad why they entered there we just like to keep track of how many people were served in that and then entered your place of business. One other thing with geofencing to kind of wrap this all together is we can do what's called addressable geofencing. So if you have addresses of, of you know, past individuals who are seeking for jobs, looking for jobs, let's say you have a thousand of them and you want to serve ads to these people individually based off of their physical address, then what we can do is we, we plug in all of those addresses and we, we put a geofence around each one of them, each one of these houses. And then we'll start serving ads to them day after day after day for up to 30 days. We can just serve ads. But the cool thing is, is that sometimes we lose the device ID because either number one, they restart their device. Maybe they get a new device. Uh, and then we lose that. We captured it and then we lost it. But the cool thing about this is, guess what? They live here. So if they get a new device or they reset their device, we can capture it again because they're going to come inside the geofence day after day after day because they live there. So that's the that's the benefit of having addressable geofencing. So anyway, um, Keith, did I cover everything before I jump into the uh, dashboard? Uh, yeah, I think we're good so far. Anybody have any questions at this point? Excellent. Okay, if you do have a question, just please let me know. We can always circle back and I can address them. So here was what we saw earlier. Yeah, is the, what, this is our reporting dashboard. We, again, uh, I said, I mentioned before, we like to be as transparent as possible. So as you're running a display campaign with us, we will give you uh, a, a reports on what's going on, how your report, uh, your, your, your campaign is running. And we can, we can go over this every month, month after month after month, so we can actually see what's going on. So what I'm going to do here is uh, go over a couple of different manpower campaigns that we currently have running so we can show you how they're, they're running right now. How they sh um, We have one that started last year. We can show you how it ran in the beginning. And then also, you know, as it's here we are, what, six, seven, eight months down the road, how it's currently running. So here we have Manpower of Eastern Idaho. Uh, Keith, let me ask you this. Uh, what time frame do you want me to look at here? Um, I, well, they, that's a fairly new one, so the, the, the current 30 days is fine. Perfect. I just meant for all of them, kind of. We can switch it up if you want to, because I know that, uh, I think it's Harrisburg started last year, so. Well, yeah, I guess, I mean, let's look at this one for a 30-day period because it's the first month that they've been running the program. Yep. And then let's look at Harrisburg for the full uh, time since September. Perfect. Okay. So what we're doing here, so right here you can actually see that we're using uh, three different tactics. Remember, there was four of them. We're using three of the four tactics to deliver uh, manpower at Eastern Iowa's uh, impressions. So we're using geofencing, contextual, and then keyword search retargeting. So what this is, is it breaks it out into how many impressions were served for each tactic. And then it kind of just sums it up in the total here for, all right, so far in the month of, you know, from May 1st till today, we've served over 70,000 impressions. Uh, 115 people have clicked on those, uh, one of those ads which gave them a click-through rate, that's CTR. Click-through rate, that means how many times uh, percentage-wise, uh, based off of the number of impressions served, how many people have clicked, it's 0.16%. Now, one thing I wanna point out here is this number may seem low, but on a national scale, a national average click-through rate on people clicking on these ads is 0 0.05. So this campaign is actually running triple the national average three times as, as, as well as the average display campaign is 0.16. And the reason why that this number nationally is low and in this campaign is lower than you would probably expect is because not everyone clicks on the ads. I mean, if you think about it, how many times have you been served an ad, you've seen it two, three, four, or five times, and you don't ever want to click on it for some reason, but you do want more information because you're like, you know what? 
um, I want more information. I don't want to click on that ad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to and I'm going to Google it. Or I'm just going to type in their name directly, like, you know, when you search for them directly, or maybe even type in the URL address directly. So people go about other means to get more information without actually clicking on the ad. So that's why this number is where it is. So if you remember here, moving along, the weighted actions was where we put a conversion zone around your business. And we can keep track of how many people enter your business after being served an ad. So here, just in this month alone, 73 people have entered the Manpower Eastern Iowa's office after being served an ad. And the cool thing about this is this is not, you know, like 20, what is that, 24 people entering two times or, you know, seven, seven or eight people entering 10 times. This is each, once we, we, we recognize a device ID has entered the conversion zone, we won't count that device ID again for another 30 days. So it's not like one person comes in every single day. It's going to count it every single day. So 73 Rob, different. Yes. I'm sorry. One, one thing I want to point out here too, when you're looking at these, these numbers are, are astronomically huge, which I'm, I'm super happy with. Um, most of the manpowers that we've started within the first month have been around 20 to 22 weighted actions. It's people that physically walk in the door. So again, I, I mean, she must be ecstatic in her territory that 73 people have walked in and we've only been doing this for a month. Right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So the weighted actions is kind of all income. This is all of the people. But what we do is we break the 73 out into how many of those 73 were geofence weighted actions because these other remember we're using three different tactics here. So the geofencing tactic alone was 35, which is, is about half. Half of the weighted actions came from the geofencing, and the other half came from either contextual or search, the combination of the two. So we uh, let's go just a step further here. We're going to show you the ads. So here are the ads that Manpower Eastern Iowa is currently using. And we actually give data on the ads themselves. How many times this ad has been served, how many clicks, the click-through rate, so forth. I can actually even click on this ad. It'll open up a new browser and take me to the click-through URL to where if I was seeing, I've been served an ad because I'm looking for a job and I'm in Eastern Iowa, this is where it would take me. And then it takes me directly to a page that shows me all the jobs, which is exactly what I want. So that's the one, uh, one of the many, many benefits of having the display campaign. But going back here, Contextual is where, remember I gave the example of someone searching for a car and they go from site to site to site and we serve your ads to someone who has visited a site that sells your similar product or service or in this case someone who's looking for a job. We don't necessarily care what website we show your ad on. We're not concerned about that. We're only concerned about who sees your ad. So we follow people wherever they go online. Remember, we're retargeting that person or that that device ID and if they go to a sports site we're going to do everything we can to show your ad on that sports site but once they leave so does your ad it doesn't stick around and show to people that are irrelevant or in this case not looking for a job so what we do is even though we don't care about the websites we keep track of the websites that we serve your ads on not only the websites but also the app, the apps themselves so I'm going to click on domains right here for contextual and what this is going to do is this is going to populate all of the websites and apps that this, uh, this campaign, the, the ads have been shown on. So I always like to sort these greatest to least by impressions. So you can actually see here, let me zoom in here just a little bit. So you can actually see which websites people are going to that we're serving your ads on and where your ads are being seen by these very specific people. Now, if I can come down here and find... Actually, you know what? This is, this is contextual. So let me go back here. I'm going to go to the geofencing, go to view domains. And what you're going to see is when this populates, you're going to see not only websites, but you're going to see numbers. So right here, for example. So you can actually see websites. This is great. But what's this number? That's not a website. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to open up a new browser. I'm going to paste that. And I'm going to type the word app after it. And what this is going to do is this is going to show me the app 
that your ad was shown on because whoever we're targeting went to this app. So it looks like Cubby Tractor or Tra Tractor is your best source for everything you want to know about the Chicago Cubs. There you go. So this is a Chicago Cubby Tracker. And if we go back here, we can actually see one ad. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm going to sort this greatest to least. You can actually see the top ads or the, the top apps. Thank you, Tony. Towards Chris, can we help you? Oh, someone's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> so you can actually see all of the, all of the uh, apps here. Which makes sense though, because remember we're doing the geofencing campaign here, and geofencing we captured mobile devices, so it just makes sense that a lot of people are on apps for this one specifically. Okay. Also for geofencing here, let's cruise on over to here. We're actually going to view the geofences. So in this particular campaign, going greatest to least, as you say, there's ten. We have ten geofences. You can see the name of the geofence. You can see the address of the geofence. How many impressions each one has served, the clicks, the click-through rate, and then all this, probably the, the most important information over here is the weighted actions. So if I sort this, let's actually do this. Let's sort this greatest to least. So this uh, Aerotech in Davenport, Iowa, didn't serve necessarily the most impressions, but they did get the most people to enter their business, to enter manpower of Eastern Iowa's business from having served these ads. So this is kind of a good indicator of saying, hey, which of these geofences is working and which one isn't? So here you can actually see two of the geofences don't have any weighted actions. All oh, right, you know what? They've got a great click-through rate, four clicks, uh, less than 2,000 impressions. So I wouldn't touch this at this point. Um, I would just let this go because we're so early on in this campaign that um, these might step, step it up and become one of the most productive. Now, as like I'd mentioned, as the, the weeks and the months move on, we're going to get a much better idea of what's working and what's not. And that's where we're going to go in and optimize the campaign. So as we see things, and we've looked at a gazillion of these, uh, these campaigns, we've ran a gazillion of them, we know where to look for these red flags, what doesn't seem right, what's working, what's not working. We're going to dive in there and we're going to start optimizing this campaign because we want to make them run more efficiently, better and better and better as time moves on. Okay. So this campaign running phenomenally. Love this number right here. I also want to jump into the other campaigns. Uh, which one would you like me to go to next, Keith? Harrisburg um, or Rochester? I guess, uh, pull up Harrisburg. Harrisburg it is. And you want me to go the entire length? Yeah. Show them what, it, what it's been since, uh, like yeah. the overall. Okay, so you can actually see it started September 27th of last year. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back a little bit further here. I'm just going to do a custom quick one of 12 months. We'll see what happens here. So you're going to be able to see the data for all of the campaign and not just for the month. So they're doing keyword search, geofencing, and contextual just like uh, the manpower of eastern Iowa. Um, 350,000 impressions, uh, 365 clicks. Their click-through rate is 0 0.10. And if you remember what I said the national average was, is 0 0.05. So this is double the national average over the span of, what is that, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. We're, we're in month nine, going in month 10. Well, wait, the, the chart is only showing you through April 30th. So it's close to it. It's close to there. But right. if you look up top. I'm sorry, what was that? Up top, it, it, it's, it's only taking to May 30th, so it's not counting this last month. It's only going to the end oh, of last month. Right, 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 right. Yeah, the data just hasn't updated yet. So we're just looking at, one, two, three, what was that, six, seven months? So you can actually see the number of clicks. The click-through rate is still going strong at double the national average, and then 291 weighted actions. That's a lot of people entering their business um, month after month after month. And then here with the ads, if I remember correctly, started off with these creatives here. You can see the creatives, in case I didn't mention this before. It's, it's the same message, the same picture, the same layout. It's just in four different sizes. 
because as you know, when you go to a website and an app, you don't know, we don't know where you've seen multiple different sizes. So we want to have different sizes available when that split second, that fraction of a second, you know, uh, bidding war, you know, is, is calculated and your ad is shown in a very specific spot. But what I wanted to point out here is this is this is the four creatives they started off with. You can actually see it's paused. Then moving down, they actually switched it up. They got a, you see, they got a new image in there. They've got a new color. They went from blue to red. And I think, Keith, you pointed this out last time that the red is actually uh, functioning better. It's got better. Yeah, data. the red's outperforming. Um, one thing I like to point out, too, when you're looking at the statistics on the side, don't weigh that solely on the size of that specific ad, because if you look far to the left, see where it says search over on the left? Can you scroll up and down there so they can see the search ads and the contextual ads? And if you see, there's different sets for each one, like see? Or, or you're just under search right now, right? I am just under search right here. Remember, we have geo okay, so, and contextual as well. Right, so all that means is that, you know, when an impression is displayed, the image that we display is based on the available spot to put that ad. Does that make sense? So if it's if it's a an app that somebody's looking on, it's going to have to be one of those really small 320 by 50 ones because that's what fits in there. If it's in a news feed on a browser that you're scrolling through in your phone, it's going to be one of the 300 by 250 ones. Or if you're on a desktop or a laptop or a tablet, you may see one of the 160 by 600. So it's the the score isn't indicative to the quality or the size of the image. It's just what happened to be displayed more times and which one's getting more clicks based on when it's displayed. Absolutely. Absolutely. So coming back here, um, yeah, these numbers are just, they're, they're great. We keep track of all the domains for each one of these tactics, like I mentioned before. If we want to go to geofencing, come over here, and we can actually see all the geofences. 13 since they started that doesn't mean because what we can do with with geofencing is we can add different geofences at any time and we can remove geofences at any time so if some are underperforming let's move remove those and if if you have new geofences that come up you know uh, as time goes on then just yeah let us know well we can add as as many geofences as you want I, I the the max is a million per campaign so I don't even think you can um, get even close to that so um, and yeah, let me let me point let me point one thing out quick. The what you run into by geofencing too many locations is you just water down the number of impressions you have to use. So if you're doing a campaign that has ten geofences and you're running a hundred thousand impressions, that's that's about average or adequate. But if you start doing twenty or thirty geofences, that just gives us less number of impressions that we can divide because we literally take the total number of impressions that we're doing for the month divide that by 30, and that really gives us how many impressions we can serve per day because this is a 30-day 30, 30 campaign. So um, if you see numbers are coming in, but they're not coming in fast enough, all you really have to do is, is add more impressions or increase your impressions. Correct. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great point. Um, one other thing I was going to say here is one of the, the, the things that uh, – one of the reasons why we have been so successful over here at Cumulus Digital is because – our campaigns are not one of those set in stone where once we launch it, you don't touch it, you can't touch it, you don't have permission to touch it. We give you complete flexibility to change, alter, increase, decrease, whatever you want to your campaign at any time. So if you want to add or remove geofences at any time, even if it's a week after we launch a campaign, absolutely. If you want to change out the creatives, absolutely. If you want to increase your budget, absolutely. You can do anything. You have that flexibility because this is your campaign, and we feel that you should have, well, a lack of better terms, control over it. So, so this is Manpower Harrisburg. We have one more that we can take a look at, and that is Rochester, New York. So let's take a peek here. And you can see this campaign began on um, February 26th. We're using geofencing, contextual, and keyword search. And since then, uh, when the campaign, it looks like it just it just ended, or maybe the data hasn't been pulled up if they renewed. I'm not sure on that, Keith. Uh, we, which one are you looking at? 
Uh, this is uh, Manpower of Rochester. Uh, Manpower of Rochester ended uh, this past month, and we're moving the impressions to Syracuse, which isn't set up yet. Oh, perfect. Awesome. So here you can actually see 233,000 impressions, 288 clicks, click-through rate 0.12. Uh, which is great, more than double the national average, and then we have 39 weighted actions. So that first one of uh, Manpower in Eastern Iowa, just the first month having over 70, and this is this ran for a couple of months having a total of 39. So you can actually see why Keith pointed out this this campaign is running phenomenally because just in the first month they already have 70. So each campaign is going to run differently. Some markets need more impressions than others. And so what we do is we, we kind of, Keith actually will be the, the point man on this to kind of nail down the, what we feel is the best uh, campaign for you with a, the geographical area you want to target and which tactics to use, what a monthly investment would be uh, the best option for you, so on and so forth. And then again, once we move forward, we can, we can, modify that and optimize your campaign moving forward. So I want to take a peek at these these creatives. So you can see you you have control. You actually even if uh well even if we create the creatives for you, we send them over to you before we use them so you can approve them. We want you to be happy with these little guys before we actually use them in your campaign. And there's another thing I haven't pointed out yet is as your, your campaign moves forward month after month after month, there's something that we call banner blindness. And it, what it is, it's, it's similar to driving to work every day, seeing the same billboard day after day after day. After a while, you stop noticing it. It almost blends into the background because you've seen it so much. That happens with these banner ads. So if we're, we're retargeting somebody you know, uh, and they keep seeing the same banner ad, we want to get a new look on there. That's why when uh, Manpower of Harrisburg, uh, we showed you two different sets of creatives is because after the first month or two, we actually got a new look on there. We changed out the image, the color, the layout, just to kind of get a new look on there to avoid that banner blindness that a lot of people get. Other than that, uh, does anyone have any questions? I feel like I just gave you a fire hose of information here, but I want to make sure that you kind of walk away uh, being a little bit more educated on display campaigns so you're able to make a, a, a more educated decision. Hey, Rob, before we jump off the call, can you switch over um, the display so I can share my screen? I'll show them where they can go to get a uh, client information sheet if they want to get this started for their territory and where they can get the um, insertion order to place an put an actual order in. Absolutely. All right, Keith, I'm about to hand it over to you. Okay, good afternoon. I do have a question about the traffic that came through the manpower offices. Yes. Do you have any data out of those individuals that did walk in? How many actually went to work? So that would be information that the Manpower Office would be able to compare, like with their list. So what we can do is, if you don't, well, I guess you guys use a national uh, website for your for your database. But what we can do is we can put a conversion tag. Oh, actually, we can't even do that. Now that I think about it. Um, Keith, remind me how we're running the other ones with uh, the conversions. Well, that's what you would point it out. We're doing three of the four techniques. The one that we're not doing is the retargeting because Manpower's website is a huge national site and it's it, it, trying to get a national site like that to add stuff or add code um, just from a security standpoint. You can imagine, you know, people don't want outside vendors adding code to their website and stuff. So we just we don't do that part of the tactic. Um, our our job really is to to get your job offers in front of the key target people that you're trying to get in front of and get them to come into your door. Once they walk in your door, I mean, I have no way to track or know if you hire them or not. Um, but what I can say is I know the Harrisburg market, um, uh, Robin in Harrisburg attributes her success growth over the past year to this campaign exclusively uh, because of, of how it's helping her. So she's seen the people coming in the door and, to equate it to like a retail business, 
you kind of watch the cash register. As long as there's money coming in the cash register, you know your advertising is working, right? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So, so can, can can everybody see my screen now? I can see it. Okay. So if if you look up top here, if you write down this address, freemarketinghelp.org forward slash manpower, all lowercase letters, 